Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm really happy to show you this absolutely amazing animation which has just come down from the Discover spacecraft. Now, the Discover spacecraft, if you don't know, it was launched uh, about three, four months ago by the by SpaceX on a Falcon 9, and it made its way out to the L1 point, which is the point in space between the Earth and the Sun where the gravity and the rotational forces just cancel out, and you can kind of balance a spacecraft there and have it sitting forever looking at the Earth uh, fully illuminated by the Sun. And the idea, one of the main motivations to do this was so that you could have a camera pointed at the Earth always and always see the daytime of the uh, daytime side of the Earth. There's a camera called the, the Earth polych uh, Polychromatic Imaging Camera. That's it. Yes, I was forgetting what it was called there. <laughs> Epic. Epic, right? So <laughs> people, people see... Uh, they published this video today it was an epic view of the earth with the moon passing in front of it and that's the that's the best thing because th this shows us so much okay so just rewind a little couple of weeks ago the there would be a new moon and of course that meant that uh, the moon was passing between the earth and the sun and it showed up in one in a bunch of frames on this spacecraft now the camera has uh, 10 different frequency bands, it has 10 different sets of filters, so it takes all of those, but they could take the red, green, and blue and assemble a nice color image showing the moon, you know, stepping across the disk of the, the Earth, and it's absolutely hypnotic to watch this thing. Uh, but there's a bunch of things that we can talk about later. Let's, let's go back and actually talk about what Discover is. Discover actually started life as something called Triana. It was a, a satellite or spacecraft originally suggested by Vice President Al Gore in the late 1990s. And his his argument or his, his inspirational speech was basically that when uh, the Apollo missions went to the moon on Apollo 17, they took this landmark photo of the Earth just in space. It's called the Blue Marble Photo. And you know, many people comment that this was kind of a great inspirational photo for them. And of course, uh, Al Gore, being a politician, he likes to talk about inspirational things. So he thought, wouldn't it be great to have a spacecraft sitting there and able to just serve up images like this every couple of hours, right? Basically, the blue marble photo in real time for the internet generation. Now, they wanted to obviously do a little more than that. So the science team kind of got to work. What could you put on a satellite that was sitting out there? And they wanted to do like a whole Earth albedo system so they would measure how much light was going in, how much light was coming out, and all these other things. And eventually they, they got the satellite built, it was scheduled to be launched, and then, well, then what happened was the political uh, wheels turned, uh, George Bush, Republican, came to power, and the mission was shelved. Basically, it had been called Gorsat too much, so I think it was just felt that perhaps it was politically... Uh, unwise to spend money launching a spacecraft. So it, it basically sat in a warehouse for about the next decade. And then 2011 rolls around and, well, a campaign has st has been running to get the spacecraft repurposed or get it relaunched. And uh, they, they did another study and they realized, well, you've got this spacecraft, it's just sitting in a warehouse, it's, you know, solid piece of technology. They could update a bunch of the electronics, they could add some new sensors to it. And one of the things that had come up as being interesting was putting a spacecraft between the sun and the earth that would actually look at the magnetic field of plasma coming in. Plasma from solar flares and coronal mass in, in ejections. Because... Uh, when we see these flares and these mass ejections and stuff coming in, it would be nice to get a little bit of warning because some of these things can really slam into the Earth's magnetosphere really hard. They can cause power grids and stuff to go a little crazy. So there's actually strategic value in knowing what is coming from the sun. So this spacecraft could just sit there and de deliver all this data. That's what it was designed to do. It had this camera, which could mean that it would still do its original mission. So it was rebranded, refitted, and launched as Discover earlier in this year. And of course, it just started returning these images. And yeah, we just had this fabulous sequence of the moon passing in front of the Earth. Now, looking at the moon, a lot of people say this looks really fake. Oh, the moon doesn't look like that. The moon is too dark. Well, 
here's the thing. A lot of people just don't realize just how dark the moon is. The moon is has an albedo of about 12%. That means that for all the light coming in, about only 12% gets reflected. It is very, very dark compared to the Earth. And the best comparison is if you've got a piece of road and not a brand new, like, you know, brand fresh piece of laid road, no, something that's been worn down a bit, it's been driven on for a while, that has an albedo of about 12%, right? So you're talking about a black tarmac has roughly the same brightness as the moon. That's why the moon in this sequence looks so dark compared to the Earth. We're also looking at the far side of the moon, which, of course, most people don't really know very well. So it does look, a, again, it does look a little strange. The Earth is a lot brighter. The Earth has an average albedo of about 30%, with the clouds being as high as like 90%, I believe. The oceans are darker, the land goes from about 10 to 40% depending upon what's covering it. Like forests, for example, have a very low reflectivity because, of course, forests are large areas of vegetarian that are absorbing the sunlight to convert to, you know, photosynthesize and run the carbon cycle and everything. So, yeah, another thing this brings out is that uh, well, pe people look at this and they're like, oh, wait, where's the stars? Well, of course you can't see stars because the the exposure is not set up to look for stars. And I've got some images here of, of the moon rising in Oakland. And you can see uh, that if you want, if so if I want to adjust the image so that I can see features on the surface of the moon, then you can just about see these lights on the hill there. You certainly can't see any stars. Now, as I turn up the exposure, more and more uh, light comes into the camera, but the features on the moon start to saturate the sensor and it just turns into a big white blob. And eventually, right at the end, there's this big white blob with the light streaming over and you can just make out a single star next to the moon here. So this is, of course, why you don't see stars in any of the Apollo photos from the surface of the moon, because they're standing on this giant reflector and they have to adjust their camera exposure to show the stuff on the surface of the moon rather than the stars in the sky. So, yeah, this is a great educational image. There's so much uh, amazing stuff from this, and, and I just saw this and I felt that I had to talk about it. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.